Imagine this, one day you wanna create your own animated movie in your bedroom as a way to learn some new filmmaking tools. The project turns out pretty good, so you figure you might as well upload it to Reddit to grab a few upvotes. Well, next thing you know, the project blows up and now you've unintentionally started an internet-wide debate and you have famous voice actors threatening to end your career that hasn't even started yet. Hi, I'm Austin. You're probably as happy as I am that this video isn't almost two hours long like the last one. And today, we're talking about the Scooby-Doo meets Five Nights at Freddy's fan film drama, which is a sentence I never thought I would have to say before, but that's because we're talking about what started as a small nonprofit side project quickly exploded into the Daphne voice actor Grey Delisle threatening to ruin an artist's career while also comparing using AI voice actors to sexual assault. Let's get into it. It all started on August 11th when a 23-year-old filmmaker by the name of Egan Tillman uploaded a nonprofit animated fan film where the gang from Scooby-Doo visits Freddy Fosbear's Pizza from Five Nights at Freddy's. The animation was completely done by Egan using Blender 3.5, and the film is legitimately really well done. The animation's insanely good, the story's engaging, and the cinematography overall is just very, very high quality. I recommend you watch it, I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out after the video. But this short film, being the quality it is, drew just a ton of eyeballs and as I record this, it's currently sitting at just over 1.2 million views. But shortly after gaining all this attention, some people on Twitter rightly concerned about the rise of AI taking away small artist jobs, made a lot of noise about how the description of the film lists four out of the seven voices being created using AI. This started an internet-wide debate about the ethics of using AI to replace voice actors, which surprisingly was largely led by former SpongeBob storyboard director and writer Jay Lender, who created a Twitter thread on August 12th stating, This film uses AI-simulated voices of currently active talent. The inevitable result of this cheap tech will be overexposure, killing their ability to make a living with their formerly unique instrument. Law must catch up now! and then further escalated the situation by tagging Mindy Kaling and the Daphne voice actor Grey Delisle. This led to one of the fans of the film replying with screenshots of Egan's updated disclaimer on AI and why he used it in the film. He writes, I'm not a fan of AI. The only reason I used AI voices for Fred, Daphne, Velma, and SG Kluger is because I can't really afford to pay a ton of voice actors at the moment. And it's also difficult to find impersonators for the gang other than Shaggy and Scooby. This isn't intended to make money, it's honestly created as a portfolio piece and a giant joke that took me way too long to animate. So I just used AI considering I'm a one man team and don't have the means for many voice actors at the moment. If it counts for anything, the rest of the video is painstakingly designed, modeled, textured, animated, lit, rendered, edited, composited, and posted, all by me, a thousand percent from scratch by hand with nothing other than my own brain and creative drive doing the work. I even learned to do a Scooby impression so I could voice Scooby myself. I mean, clearly this is just a kid that wanted to do something for fun and he didn't mean any harm by using AI in his project. He's never even tried creating an animation in the first place, so I largely doubt that he even thought it would get as big as it did. But when it comes to the AI and art discussion, it really boils down to who's using it and what's their intention behind it. If we're talking about studios or teams with the resources and connections to actually hire people in the industry, then yeah, using AI to replace jobs in any way is extremely harmful. And we need our prehistoric government to actually create reasonable laws to protect workers against these inevitabilities. Or we need more strong unions like WGA and SAG-AFTRA who are on strike right now that are willing to actually fight to protect workers' rights before they're taken away. In defense of some AI advancements, they genuinely will aid artists in making their workflow easier while also opening up new possibilities that wouldn't be possible without new AI tools. And many of these tools have been used for a decade or more already. In the hands of independent artists, these tools are extremely powerful. However, in the hands of a corporation, they'll just be used to force artists to push out more work while not offering them any more benefits or pay whatsoever. But the nuances of AI ethics aren't exactly why we're here today. It's actually the opposite, because following one of the fans' films, replying to Jay Lender's thread with Egan's statement, Grey Delisle, who was tagged in the thread, decided to speak up. She said, I will never, ever work for this person, and I am sharing their name with every voice actor I know. 
essentially threatening to blacklist this random 23-year-old, believing that he stole her voice for his animated film. Eventually, though, it was actually revealed that the AI voices Egan used were from the 1969 version of the show and weren't actually based on Gray's voice. This nuance didn't stop the debate from blowing up even further. Now with people pissed off at Jay Lender and Gray Delisle for going out of their way to stomp out the career of a random 23-year-old that just learned to animate for the first time, Egan quickly responded the next day and apologized, saying, Hey Gray, just wanted to apologize personally. I'm just a 23-year-old kid who appreciated the show you were a part of and wanted to bring some of the joy it brought me back into the world. Adding, it's a little disheartening to see someone who has made it in the industry be so quick to punch down on a young, broke, independent creator just trying to make art and hopefully be able to do it professionally someday. I believe we all make mistakes, and to be completely honest, it feels a bit cruel for a successful person, such as yourself, to attempt to crush people with lesser opportunity for their missteps. I'm sure if your past errors were treated the same way, you wouldn't be where you are. Anyways, if there's anything I can do to make it right, please let me know. My apologies again. Thanks. This led to an outpour of support from the community, with dozens of voice actors offering to lend their talents to help Egan redub the film. And despite being the youngest in the situation, Egan ends up handling things in the most mature way. And the next morning, Egan tweeted this, adding context to the film. Y'all, I don't hate voice actors. I literally just viewed my video as a giant overproduced meme. I didn't really think AI was that big of a deal because the video was just a joke I was making in my free time. I genuinely thought I'd get a couple hundred upvotes on Reddit at best. Adding on, also, everyone keeps saying that I could have found volunteers online, but this is basically my first ever animation. I had no idea what the voice actor community was like, and as an artist, I thought it would be very rude to ask other artists for free or low-balled work. But yeah, I literally despise AI. I just didn't think the voices in my FNAF meme that I spent too much time on would be discussion in the AI conversation. So I apologize sincerely, and I have no plans to use AI again. Despite the short thread, the hate on Twitter continued to flow Egan's way, so later that night he tweeted this, further agreeing with the anti-AI takes. I hope y'all don't think I'm pro-AI just because anti-AI people were harsh with me. Yeah, some people were reductive and mean, but I'm not some safe haven for AI apologists now. I genuinely agree with the sentiment of VAs, and I'm glad I understand now. Adding on, people should be much kinder and more understanding of new and ignorant creators, but I still don't like AI. I'm even more against AI now that I get the perspective of voice actors specifically. We can disagree on tone and still agree in sentiment. And I agree with Egan here. If you have the means, you should hire real voice actors, especially in any case where you intend to profit. But for the AI disagreement to go so far as to have real industry professionals threatening to blacklist you is insane. Can't they just do something normal like leave a concerned comment under the video? Not threaten to use their power as a former Spongebob writer and a part-time Daphne voice actor to run you out of town. Meanwhile, you're just living at your parents' house trying to make something for fun. Can't a 23-year-old have fun anymore without getting blacklisted from an entire industry? This is Biden's America. The next day, Egan tweets about working on a redub for the film and is looking to hire voice actors for Daphne and Velma. It's at this point on August 15th that Jay Lender was receiving so much hate on his end for inciting outrage at Egan's fan film that Egan had to tweet himself calling off the dogs. He explains that he talked to Jay Lender who apologized for the way everything went down. Egan then asks for everyone to move on from the situation now that this is resolved. Following this, Jay Lender posts an explanation tweet with a screenshot of his apology. He says, In response to many, many requests, I have deleted the Springtrapped AI thread. A screenshot of my apology to Egan will remain below. In the apology, Jay writes, I don't know what's going on in your corner of the internet, but if my post has caused you any suffering, then I am truly, truly sorry for that. The intent was not to bring trouble to your door, but to illustrate an issue I believe to be of vital importance to vocal artists. My use of the word law was never intended to suggest legal action against you, but rather to prompt a rethinking of applicable law in the AI age. Tagging in outsiders was the wrong way to do it, and the resulting explosion is on me. I think that's a pretty sincere apology from Jay, and hopefully it diffuses the situation. It doesn't. But that wraps up the Jay Lender vs. Egan Thyman saga, and we're still far from over. But before we get to the real drama of the situation, Egan fired off a few more tweets regarding the controversy. 
First, poking fun at the industry professionals that quickly changed their tune following the backlash they received for ganging up on some random guy. Then in a later quote tweet saying, After the heat I got for not supporting VAs, I better see y'all in this dude's replies supporting the mess out of him. Used the voice of Shaggy in my short and he did great. And included this great video from the Shaggy voice actor. Look, if you haven't seen it already there, gang, Scooby-Doo, where are you? Spring Trap by Egan. Egan did a groovy, groovy project, and like, I'm stoked to be a part of it. Like, apparently there's a whole bunch of controversy, like, there's some voice actors not too happy, thinking AI's gonna take over. Like, Jankies, you better watch out for me. Velma Tinkley, I'll take over. <laughs> Zoinks! Like, nobody needs to get in a kerfluffle there, gang. They just enjoy the Scooby nostalgia. <laughs> like, enjoy the good old times. Keep the positivity lifted there, gang. The vibes of this man are just through the roof. But I feel like that's probably a requirement of doing a Shaggy impression in the first place. Because canonically, the character's just faded as hell 24-7. Egan followed up with a small thread giving additional context on why he created the film and how he's felt about the drama. He says, I think the most frustrating thing about all this is being held to the standard of an animator. As if I should have known all these things. I'm not an animator. I want to direct movies. I taught myself to animate because that's the only way I could make my movies with no budget. Springtrap was literally me practicing animation in a piece that was coherent enough to go in my portfolio when complete. I have a short film I wrote that is very dear to my heart and I did all of this so I could properly animate it myself. Finishing up the thread with... I'm over it, but I just think people should know that this was all just a practice run at animation and I legit knew nothing. But I seriously respect the art and wanted to give it my best, but I'm happy it was good enough to convince people I actually knew what I was doing. I feel bad for this random 23 year old that has to be traumatized over a Scooby-Doo FNAF crossover fan film. But wait, the weird guilt tripping isn't over yet because after three full days, Gray decided to respond to Egan in a pretty strange way. She said, Egan, thank you for apologizing. I hope you will remove the stolen voices and hire some non-union folks who would jump at the chance to get some experience and something for their demo. Theft is wrong, but I forgive you if you do the right thing. I've never heard somebody give the advice to hire non-union workers. Like, can't you just say students or independent artists? I know she's probably saying, like, don't get the sag after members to scab, but she said it in the weirdest way. Also, this is such a bad way to end your reply. Theft is wrong, but I forgive you if you do the right thing. Like, he didn't even steal your voice. What power do you have to forgive him? Just because you play the same character as the 1969 voice actors that he used? It's not stealing roles from voice actors in the industry for him to make a non-profit fan film as a way to just practice learning animation, which I think he clearly explained in his AI disclaimer underneath his video. A few minutes later, Gray followed up in a separate tweet addressing the people that were calling her out for saying that she would blacklist Egan. She wrote, Stealing someone's art for your own recognition and profit is wrong, period. It's unbelievable to me that folks are mad at me for being angry that my voice was stolen without my consent. Wow. Despite only around an hour later replying to somebody underneath the tweet, clearing up that she knows her voice wasn't actually stolen. They wrote, I thought the original voice in the video was based off the 60s version, not yours. And she replied, it was, but that's still wrong. I was too upset to watch it, so it took a while for me to figure that out. My stance has not changed though. Just extremely weird for her to double down on her stance, considering it was originally blacklisting Egan from the entire industry. In another reply, she complains about the legality of using AI voices, saying, He posted in the video why he was doing it and said it was perfectly legal, which it was not. We have come to an understanding now, but at first it was a slap in the face. How can you be so reactionary over a Scooby-Doo FNAF crossover animation? He's like not even making any money off it, so what would you sue him for? But she decided to end her night with her worst take in the situation so far. Creators who do unethical things run the risk of getting blacklisted. That's just a fact. I said I was going to warn my colleagues as I would do for anyone who is vulnerable to theft. The filmmaker has apologized and promised to do the right thing from here on out. We're good. Oh, I didn't realize being the goddamn Daphne voice actor gave you the power to blacklist anybody from Hollywood and just bully random people online. It's a pretty awesome work benefit. All I get at my job is free coffee and a freaking snack cart. This drama then reaches its peak with this video from Grey Delisle herself clearing up the AI kerfuffle. Hi everyone. 
Uh, it's Grey Delisle. I'm doing a little surprise Instagram live thing, which I, I'm terrified of because what if I say it's something the wrong thing? But I have to address a kerfuffle. <laughs> There's a kerfuffle that happened on Twitter. First, let's not call it a kerfuffle. When you threaten some rando online off of loose speculation. A filmmaker made a Scooby animation, and it's actually, it's beautiful. But the problem with it is that they took... They use AI voices for um, actors without their consent and, you know, no compensation or anything. In this case, she knows Egan is an independent artist that used the voices from the 1969 version of the TV show for a nonprofit film. It's misleading for her to continue framing the situation as if Egan is an established filmmaker and had the resources and intention to do a full-blown project. And mentioning no compensation when he clearly states that he isn't making any money off this is ridiculous. Sure, maybe it'd be different if he was using the voice actor's voices in a malicious way, but he just made a short animation. Because they, they tweeted it out and then said, you know, watch this animation. I, I used AI for Grey Delisle and another actor. Um, but it's okay because I just don't have the money to hire them, so I hope they understand. And I was like, oh, no, no, that's bad. I don't know why she's obviously lying here, trying to say that Egan tweeted something about not being able to hire her, so he used her AI voice. The way she describes the whole interaction and her reaction doesn't even explain that it was a fan of the film that she replied to who was sharing screenshots of the video's description. And by looking at the interaction now, I don't even think she knows what the hell she was doing. She obviously wasn't replying to Egan. I tweeted, I will never work for you and, and, and I will tell every actor I know not to work for you because you're a thief or something to that effect. I can't remember. Um, I didn't know anything about this filmmaker. I didn't know their age or anything. And So then why did you threaten to blacklist him from the entire industry before even doing the slightest bit of research into the situation? You just reacted without knowing all of the details despite everything being readily available to you. People keep going, Great Delilah yelled at some kid and, and she was she's really childish about it and she handled it completely wrong. But no, I don't think so. It's like an emergency. This is an emergency that computers are taking artists' livelihoods away. I mean, I'll I'll be fine. Here she tries to brush over her punching down by saying she was just fighting against the rise of AI. And if we start letting things slide like this and not reacting, like maybe inappropriately. <laughs> how can you receive this much backlash for how you reacted, but still you're trying to find ways to justify acting this harshly to a random person using AI? You don't have to gossip to all your friends about it and ostracize somebody you don't know. It's literally one guy, like you could just talk to him and change his mind about using AI so that any films he creates in the future, he can hire actual voice actors and give them jobs. It makes no sense to attempt to shut him out from making films altogether. I mean, I feel like it's we're at war with computers. It's like an emergency and I needed to speak out about it. God, the Facebook brain rot with the Gen X haircut is too much for me. It turns out the filmmaker was on the young side. They keep, people keep saying they're a kid. They're not a kid. They're an adult. You're 50 years old. You probably can't even tell the difference between somebody that's 23 and 33. But people are like, you attempted to blackball that person. Uh, when you steal, when you behave unethically in our business, I'm sorry that blackballing is is a thing that can happen. This isn't the 1940s. You don't go around blackballing people because they wronged you. I feel like her perception of Hollywood is based off of some old ass black and white movies. And I mean, all I was doing was warning other actors as I would warn anyone like I, on Twitter, I was saying, you know. Wow, thank God you warned them about the dangers of Shaggy meeting Freddie Fosbear. So, cause people were like, why, that was really mean the way that you worded that person. I was like, I, I'm the victim here. Why am I in trouble? Oh, people were so mad at me. You're not the victim. Like you yourself admitted earlier that it wasn't even your voice. This has nothing to do with you besides it being Scooby-Doo related. And then the person said, well, I had no other choice. I have no budget. You know, I had to do it. I had to use AI. That is BS. That's not even what Egan said. Like he literally said it was just a project to help him learn how to animate for the first time. And he never expected it to gain traction like a legit project. I don't know why she wants to frame Egan so badly in this video. Every week I meet people who want to do voiceovers. You're a freaking voiceover artist. Of course you meet other people that want to do voiceovers. I, I said, you know, you can find actors that are non-union and just starting out and probably would have done your project for free just to have 
the experience. Which Egan clearly stated that he's already in the process of redubbing the film with actual voice actors. But that's also not even what her tweet said in the first place. It was just an explicit threat to blacklist Egan. It would have been completely different if she showed any nuance in her reaction at all. AI is not the answer. It's, it's, and it's also bad. It's, t it's bad. And if this is, becomes the new thing, then we're all doomed. Yeah, we all understand that AI isn't the answer. And everybody agrees that they don't want it to replace humans. But you can't use it as an excuse to attack other humans. Develop some actual opinion about the laws that have to be put in place to protect workers against AI. Don't lash out at other workers that have no power. I was pretty, pretty hurt. <laughs> I felt like a slap in the face. Oh, and then he said, well, when I get money, I, I would hire you for projects. I'm using AI now, but when I get a budget, I'll hire you. That's not even what he said to you. And I just was like, no, because you just violated my trust by stealing my voice. That's not good. That's like a guy like, you know, I, I liken it to someone like grabbing your grabbing you inappropriately or something and going, well, I just wanted to do that now, but someday I'm going to ask you to be my girlfriend. And it's like, no, you're not. I don't want to. I don't want. Yeah, y you lost me. You're comparing somebody using an AI voice filter to sexual assault. What the hell are you talking about? And then, to, and then for me to get in trouble by saying I don't want to work for you and I don't want to, and I'm going to tell my friends what you did. People got really mad at me about that. It, it was hard for my brain to wrap around that. Yeah, I mean, listening to you now, I still don't think you're sorry in the slightest for the things that you said. Not to mention what you just said comparing the situation to actual sexual assault. That's wild. But I'm not against young filmmakers. I think that's phenomenal. And I, and, but you, you can't just steal. You, you have to ask. And we're actors. We love, we, we, creative people want to collaborate and do things with, people. We want to. We, we love, we champion those things like that, but not when it's done without consent. In this specific situation, he didn't steal money from anybody. He clearly stated that he's actively in the process of redubbing the project before you posted this, and it was never your voice to give consent for in the first place. And you know that. So why do you post this? So I just wanted people to stop being mean to me on Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, it sure seems like that. But the opposite happened with now even more people getting mad at Gray for equating using AI voice actors to sexual assault. This eventually led to Twitter users calling her out for using stolen art to promote a bunch of her recent music. She claims the person she hired found them on a public domain site, but who knows if that's true. And that's the entire Scooby-Doo meets Five Nights at Freddy's fan film drama all wrapped up for you. Let's do a quick recap before we get out of here. On August 11th, Egan Tillman, a 23-year-old filmmaker and first-time animator, uploaded a 10-minute non-profit short film titled Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? in Spring Trapped. One day later, former SpongeBob writer and storyboard director Jay Lender starts a Twitter thread calling out the film for using AI-simulated voices of currently active talent. To signal boost this even more, he tagged Mindy Kaling and Daphne voice actor Gray Delisle. Following this, a fan responds to Jay with screenshots stating Egan's opinion on his use of AI within the film. Gray Delisle responds the same day stating, I will never ever work for this person and I am sharing their name with every voice actor I know. This caused Egan to respond the next day with a sincere apology expressing how they felt about the whole situation. This was followed the next couple days with more tweets from Egan defending voice actors and criticizing AI while discussing the context of the film and his plans to redub the project in the near future. Eventually, the online discussion surrounding Egan's use of AI voice actors and the industry professionals that threatened to blacklist him boiled over to the point that Egan had to tweet asking everyone to stop attacking Jay. This also led to Jay taking down the initial thread after receiving too much hate, while also delivering Egan a genuine apology. Following this resolution, on August 16th, Egan shares more tweets, first poking fun at industry professionals, shouting out the voice actor that played Shaggy, and then explaining his frustration with the way he was punched down on. That night, Gray Delisle finally responds to Egan's apology, asking him to hire non-union workers, and comparing what he did to theft. Then, shortly after, she continues to post about the situation, irresponsibly framing the fan film as stealing someone's art for their own recognition and profit, adding that it's unbelievable to her that folks are mad at her for being angry that her voice was stolen without her consent. 
while immediately after replying to someone admitting that she knows the voice wasn't actually based on her, but instead using the voice actor from the 1969 version of the show. Later, Gray followed up by tweeting, Creators who do unethical things run the risk of getting blacklisted. That's just a fact. Then the next day, she posted a video to her Instagram attempting to sum up the entire kerfuffle by wildly misrepresenting Egan and the situation and comparing what he did with AI voice actors to sexual assault. This prompted even more backlash at Grey Delisle, with Twitter users calling her out for using multiple pieces of stolen art to promote her recent music. So there we have it, the entire Grey Delisle for Scooby-Doo at Five Nights at Freddy's drama. What do you think? When it comes to AI, it's a quickly evolving conversation and technological progress only seems to be speeding up. I believe that when it comes to the introduction of AI tools in the workplace, the more informed and nuanced discussion we have, the better. So let me know, do you think Egan Tillman was in the wrong for creating his film using some AI voice actors? Do you think Jay Lender or Gray Delisle were in the wrong for the way they attacked Egan? I'd love to hear your takes on the entire story in the comments below. If you want to stay caught up on the latest random internet drama, feel free to subscribe. Thank you everybody that joined since the last video. We're going to hit 100k in no time. And if you have any wild stories you want to send my way, feel free to find me on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. I can't keep driving, I can't sit still. Brain gets dry and I won't fulfill. Next prescription the doc can't fill. Don't feel tired, I just feel ill. It's been a minute. Take the time, till a minute, and I lie Feel awake, but I can't slip I wanna grasp on reality, all I wish